Hey folks, Dave here. I uh, hope everybody's doing well today. I'm good. I appreciate you stopping back by to check out another video. I believe we'll do another Valentine's project. Uh, and we'll just start off with the same heart we used for the last one. But I'll put a link down in the description for it. So go up top and make sure your lock is on. And just change the height to 140 millimeters. And that'll change the width proportionately, and that puts it just over uh, five inches tall. So you want to select it again. And then you want to go down and make it a cut line. And then you want to duplicate it. Pull one out. And just you can make it small and get it out of the way because we're going to suspend that inside. Uh, and then just duplicate another one because we're going to put a back on it. And then we'll cut a uh, slot in the back piece so we can make a little stand. Uh, so select the main one here. And then go over to offset. We want to make this a 12 millimeter uh, inward offset uh, for corner. Now the difference between corner bevel and round, uh, just watch right here, and you can see the change. Bevel will square it off, and round will just make it look round. That's the only thing it affects as far as I know. Yeah, it doesn't affect the bottom. It's just this centerpiece for some reason. Okay, corner. And then, now remember you can use your scroll to move in and out. You can push down on it to move the entire canvas around. Uh, while you're selecting, if you pull from the right, all you have to do is touch the item and it'll select. If you come from the left, you get a red line and you have to select the entire object for it to select. And the right, you get a green line, and you just have to touch. Okay, so we want to group these together. So right click and group. And then we can grab this little one over here, pull it over, and we'll resize it. Just bring it down smaller, and then duplicate it. Pull one out and just let it kind of barely touch. And then you can shift, select the other one, and then you can click weld. If it's just two objects together, it's weld. Uh, when it's suspended, uh, like it will be, it'll, it'll be a union. Okay, so you can, you can make this a little bigger if you want to. But we just want to suspend it. And for centering, you can't really use the centering tools or the alignment tools because uh, of the shape of the heart. It would put it in a weird place. So you just have to kind of put it where you want it. And that looks pretty good. So then you can grab a square. Just draw one out. Drop it. Hit your selector tool. Uh, you can just make it a height of about six millimeters. That should be plenty to suspend it. Then you can duplicate it. So you can put one over. I don't know what just happened. We'll just do it again. Duplicate it. I do that stuff like that a lot. Okay, so put one over here somewhere. And then stretch it to where it touches in here. And then you can Shift, select here, and you can weld. It's still weld because it's two objects. And then we'll do the same thing over here. And again, it's two objects, so it's still the weld function. That one, shift, select the other, and then weld. Now, here's where it becomes a union. So, shift, 
select the uh, larger piece, go over to Union, and click Union, and there you go. Okay, so let's put, we're going to write some names here, of course, and then we'll put a piece down here at the bottom. Just kind of draw something out that doesn't hang over. That's probably good there. Click your selector tool. Get in close, make sure it doesn't hang over the edges. That one's over a little bit. We'll just pull it back. That's good. Leave it selected. Shift, select everything else. And this too will be a union because it's covering that space right there. All right, so uh, let's do some writing. Okay, so hit your text tool. Uh, freestyle script is pretty good for this. It, it burns good. More often than not, I use a, uh, uh, it's Academy engraved, but it's more of a, a blocky font, but this uh, freestyle script looks more like uh, handwriting. Not really, but it's it's different anyway. It looks pretty good. You choose what you want to choose. I'm just talking. Okay, so we'll put Dave. You don't have to put Dave on yours. Uh, you can put uh, something else. I'm just going to duplicate that, put it over here. And put rows. And then hit your select tool. And we will make this a line integrated. We'll do the same thing here. Here. And then down here we will just copy. I'm just writing and talking, so y'all do this however you want to. We just want to go through all the steps it'll take to do it. And we're just going to say always. Don't forget to hit your selector tool. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we're going to make a stand. So just grab a square, just draw it out and drop it. Get your selector tool, and then go up top and uh, make sure your lock is off. And then just make it 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters. And that, uh, that's about two inches square. And move this up and we'll get in closer. Now we're just going to cut this off corner to corner. So you can just duplicate this square, pull it out. We're just going to subtract one from the other. So just tilt it and work with it until you can get it corner to corner. We can do this. It'll be close enough anyway. They don't want to cooperate, but we're going to get there. There we go. That's pretty good. So when you're subtracting, uh, select the one you're subtracting from, then shift, select what you're subtracting, and then hit the subtract tool over here, and that's what we're left with. I know that was plain, but it, uh, it worked. So now we need a cross fin to go on this. So grab another square, draw it out, drop it. And just make it a uh, height of 25. 25, not 252. And then a width of 
And we're just looking for something about half the height of this. So now we need to make some slots. So just grab a square, draw it out. Because we got to put a slot up here. And the wood we're going to use is a uh, three millimeter bass wood that is not plywood, it's solid. And it's been in the shop for a while, and it's swollen up a little bit. Uh, so normally I would adjust for the kerf, but in this case I've got to go up. Uh, it's supposed to be 3 millimeters, but it's actually about 3.3. So we're going to make the slot uh, 3.1. So let's make the width here 3.1. And the height, we will adjust to this right here, which is pretty good. It's a little bit taller. So we just want that setting right there. And again, we're going to select the heart, shift, select the slot, and hit the subtract button. And there we go. Okay, I could have got a copy of that, but we're just going to make another slot. So grab it, pull it out. This will be much smaller. Uh, we're still going to make it uh, 3.1. And we're going to put one here and one here. And this will set on top of this. So we're going to select it, go up to a range, and we are going to rotate it. Let me get in a little closer. And then we're just going to put it about halfway, which in this case would be about 12 and some change. So that looks pretty good. So we're going to get a copy of that. Duplicate, put it down here on the bottom, and you want it to, uh, you want to get in close, and you can watch your cursor change, and then you can snap it to the object, and then you can shift, select the object, and do a vertical line, but you're going to have to move it on your own because of the uh, the way this is has been cut out, the center puts it kind of out of whack. So probably should just hit Control Z, and back it up, and put it where we had it. It looks pretty good. And then this one can be in the center. So we'll make sure that is snapped. Okay, and then we can shift and select the outer piece and then do vertical align. So now we can, you want to make sure that when you pull these across, that the slots will uh, meet or exceed each other by a little bit. And then it'll just sit on there like a little fin and it will, uh, it will hold it up. So we want to select here, we want to shift and select the slot, and then hit Control Z because I've done it wrong. Select, shift, select, and then go to subtract. And that still didn't work. Folks, it can get, uh, it can get trying sometimes doing this. It's what we do. So I'm going to pull it out. And we'll try to close in on it. Grab that edge and snap it to it. And we'll try this again. Select, shift, select, and subtract. There we go. So everything does not work 
the way you think it will work every time. So just keep just keep at it. All right, so this one will select, shift, select again, and subtract. Okay. And that looks pretty good. So I think we're there, folks. So let me uh, let me get set up in the laser. Uh, real quick, over here on the right, always move your engraves above your cuts. I almost messed that up. I've done it before quite a few times. Okay, let me get set up in the laser, and uh, we'll get this cut out and see what it looks like. Okay, be right back. All right, well, I believe we're ready. Uh, so we're using uh, three millimeter solid basswood. It's kind of soft, but we're going to try it, see how it works out. So uh, let's do this. Okay, well, let me clean this up, put it together, and we'll get a closer look at it. Okay, well, here's our finished piece. I think it turned out pretty good. Let me see if I can get it a little closer. So this uh, solid basswood is really light wood, and it's not always the best choice. Uh, but when you're layering, uh, it works out really well. And this, uh, this little cross... Uh, stand we made works out good because it's a really light piece so you could add some paint and uh, fix this up really nice have some fun with it so uh, I hope you enjoyed watching I, I really appreciate you folks watching and helping the channel grow and uh, if you ever have any questions about this or or any other general laser questions that I can help with uh, just just let me know and I'll be glad to try so uh, just check back often for new videos. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.